So I'm sitting here with Dr. Jamie Howe, and it's a pleasure and an honor to see you sitting here with you. Now, you're a general dentist. Why do you enjoy placing implants? Uh, I really think implants are the future of dentistry and currently where dentistry is heading. We used to do a lot of bridges um, in dentistry to replace teeth. Why destroy two teeth when you can just replace the missing tooth with, with an implant? Do you think general dentists should place implants? I don't think that all general dentists should place implants, but I think that all general dentists that are willing to learn how to place implants to the same degree as a specialist should place implants. When did you graduate? I graduated in May of 2016. So you're a fresh grad. I am. And you are placing implants. Yes. That's awesome. You come from a family of dentists. I do. I'm a fourth generation dentist mm -hmm. and um, implants were not um, even an option for my great grandpa who was a dentist or even my grandpa. My father places implants and does a lot of uh, periosurgery. He's a general dentist as well. And so that was the environment I was um, brought up in is to be an excellent general dentist. So you're a super GP. Yes. That's I awesome. So. I, I, I wouldn't mind being treated by you at all because you have the personality and you have the skill and you have the passion for dentistry. Is dentistry what you expected it to be? With dentistry, most of the environment that I practice in, it's either PPO or even no insurance sometimes. The aspects of dentistry that are, I guess, not what I anticipated was the financial hurdles of, of patients. In dental school, that was an issue as well. Explaining to patients why they need crown lengthening or why they need perio surgery. Implants are a little easier to sell because they're missing a tooth. But explaining those those whys and then the solution and then presenting also the fee I think is the uh, trickiest part for me. I know there's a lot of dentists out there who graduate maybe not in a dental family and you have to go out to the to the workforce and take any job that you get and unfortunately not all dental environments are uh, healthy there's a lot of toxic environments out there and you know be careful what environment you're in because the first job you have really starts shaping your future. Probably, I've only been in out of my residency in dental school since May and I've worked in probably five different offices, um, one of which is my father's and I'm there the most, but some other jobs part-time and some of those offices have put me in a uh, uncomfortable situation where I was asked to do things that I didn't agree with um, and I'm a a pretty strong advocate for the patient so I didn't do those things but it did cause me to butt heads with the uh, supervising doctor that was asking me to do those things that I just really wasn't comfortable with and I did not think were in the patient's best interest but I think that made me um, stronger and even more passionate to just provide the best care for the patient no matter what whether that means that I take the fall and I no longer work in that office because I don't like the position that they're putting me in or I can find a better solution and, and be a voice for that patient. It's a tough call sometimes. Doing the right thing can be hard. Uh, but I think over the long run, respect the profession, respect that diploma. To be in dental school, to be getting mentored and taught by these awesome professors who are really loving and genuine and humanistic, and to be thrown out to the real world where it can use a dose of humanism, it was a little tough for me. But I think the more we share, the more we talk together, there's ways to overcome all of those. And right now, I sometimes work in offices that are not necessarily, you know, HMO based offices and stuff like that. And over time, I'm able to turn those offices around because you can make very good money doing the right thing in dentistry. So me and Dr. <laughs> Haug are gonna go in right now and, and do an implant surgery. Anyone out there who has a passion for implant dentistry, who has a passion for surgery, don't let anyone stop you, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If you are committed to putting in the time, to seeking mentors, to studying, to doing things the right way, you can do it. Like Dr. Hauk said at the beginning of this interview, implant dentistry is a very important field and there's a huge need for it and the need is only gonna get larger. So if you are well positioned to accept that need, you're gonna be a winner.